How efficient is our uh, waste management on the island? We have a very um, efficient waste management service here for domestic waste, which is largely what I'm concerned with. Con commercial waste is really a whole other um, system in itself. But for domestic waste, we have a system really that um, enables us to divert as much waste as possible from landfill, which is the crucial issue on the island, minimising landfill void. So we have um, really a series of several different options that we use. The first is here on this site where we take the collected domestic waste and convert it into electricity. We make flock fuel and then that flock fuel is burned in a gasification plant that's also on this site and that generates electricity that goes into the grid. So that's an island green electricity supply. We also have composting, uh, where we compost garden waste that uh, residents bring to our sites. And then we have straightforward recycling of materials. Um, people are familiar with things like bottle banks for glass and cans, textiles. And then, of course, there's the civic amenity sites that have a whole raft of other materials, such as wood and metals and so on, that can also be recycled. So, by the time that you've added all those together, you're looking at a good 60 to 70 percent of the domestic waste being diverted away from landfill, and that is a real success story for the island. How, do, how does that compare with uh, other, you know, other areas of the country? It's um, it's quite difficult to benchmark it nationally because a lot of the uh, league tables throughout the UK are based solely on recycling and composting. Now, when we pit ourselves against those two alone, we don't compare very favourably. So we're not very high up the league tables, but once you factor in the waste to energy side of things, which for the island is a very, very important side, um, then yes, we're, we're doing very well. Why don't we compare favourably on the measures that are, or the benchmarks that are measured? Because, um, the island decided a long time ago that due to the volatile nature of a lot of recycling markets, prices and so on, the economics didn't necessarily always stack up and therefore it was preferable for the island to deal with waste on the island. And hence, way back in about 1988-89, the island first embarked on producing energy from waste, which meant the waste stayed locally on the island and was dealt with here and you weren't then suffering all those material price fluctuations. So how much electricity is produced from the, from the waste? P potentially if um, we take in all the domestic waste here you're looking at about two megawatts. It's not quite that at the moment. You're looking at um, two megawatts being several thousand homes so um, it's probably down to about one and a half megawatts at the moment, although that varies depending on the throughput of fuel. It's a very, very good system and um, sort of linking into the, the whole eco-island scenario, it, it does tick the box for being the first producer really on the island at the moment. I know there's other things in the pipeline, but it is the first producer of green waste. The refuse collection lorries, providing the facility is operational, um, and you can hear it whirring away behind us here. Providing it's operational, all of the collected waste comes into this facility and that then separates out all of the plastic and the cardboard and any other combustible waste. That's often a worry with residents that um, they're placing a lot of waste into their general bin and uh, feel that it's being consigned to landfill. And of course it's not. It comes in here, it's separated out mechanically and it's reprocessed into fuel. And that really answers the question that a lot of people ask, which is why don't we recycle particularly plastic items, is because we reuse them f for fuel. The metals are extracted. We have um, an overband magnet for ferrous metal and then something called an eddy current for non-ferrous metal. So any metal that is in the domestic bins, steel cans, food tins, aluminium cans, drinks cans, aerosols and so on, all of those metals are extracted and recycled. Glass isn't. We do rely very heavily on householders using either the curbside recycling box or the uh, bottle banks for glass.
Am I right in thinking in the curbside box you're not supposed to put cardboard? You can put paper but not cardboard? Is That's that... right. And there's, the reason for that is that um, at the moment the, the market that we're supplying, newspapers and magazines, is the market that's um, a slightly higher premium paid because it's a specifically separated waste stream. Um, and we wish to continue to do that because the economics are preferable. If you start adding cardboard, it is recyclable, but it becomes a lower grade product. The return is lower and the economics get slightly harder. So putting cardboard in the bin still means it's coming in here and we're still making it into fuel. So you say 60% is diverted away from landfill at, yes. at, at the moment. Yes. What can we do about the other 40%? What's needed to go the, you know, the next level? There are still people who don't recycle some of the basic materials, so when the dust carts come in here you're very aware that there's still a lot of glass um, in the bin and that will end up coming out um, of a reject stream here and going to landfill. Things like organic waste, we have the little green uh, curbside caddy. Uh, the uptake of that is increasing now, so that's good news. Home composting is another way of increasing that as well. But generally, island residents um, are doing very well. Um, we have still a number of boxes to distribute, so people are still um, taking on the new curbside services. Business waste is handled by numerous contractors, um, several of whom now have systems for collecting and recycling. So as, as a business person on the island, you can definitely recycle your glass, your food waste, uh, there are facilities for office waste and so on. It's much better than it was even going back two or three years. Um, gradually that's picking up, which is absolutely brilliant news for the island because historically uh, businesses really were keen to recycle and the facilities just weren't there for them, which was really quite alarming. So I'm pleased to see that gradually now that system is improving. What do you do about... Um electrical equipment from households, how do you handle that? Like batteries and things? Batteries now, ordinary domestic batteries are recycled through a batteries directive and you'll find that lots of supermarkets have little collection boxes for those, which is brilliant. Uh, we've been lagging behind the continent on that one. Other items go to the civic community sites and we have separate collection points from those and all of those, anything that's electrical, right down to a hairdryer or a toaster, is collected and recycled as part of that directive. I think the island's doing very well. There's always room for improvement, yes. Um, there's still um, waste that we need to tackle, um, things that are difficult to recycle, and we're always looking at the next move to take. It, it's not a static process by any means. You've already mentioned things like legislation. Um, legislation together with new technologies means that it's a process that's gradually always, thankfully, evolving. It needs to. Mm. And does that mean there's opportunities for island businesses to get involved in recycling as a business? Yes. For instance, would be the, the battery recycling directive that's just come in. Historically, there were very few reprocessors in the UK and batteries were being sent to places like France. Well, now, because the directive has come in, that's set up a marketplace in the UK for people to develop the systems to recycle them here. So, yes, on the back of some of these laws, and directives, um, new businesses can spring up.